Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to uh, visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. And I seem to have an eyelash here that is poking me in the eye. I'm not going to edit that out. All right. So uh, starting off at CNET.com, Apple sends out invites for a September 10th iPhone event. That is correct. It's official. Apple has scheduled an event for a week from today, and we're expecting a new iPhone. And this is uh, today as in September 3rd when we're recording this. Uh, read on for more details. So should be pretty interesting. I fully expect iOS 7 will be uh, uh, available for general uh, release September 7th. Um, we're expecting to see new iPhone hardware. There's been a bunch of stuff uh, that's been being leaked for an iPhone 5S, which will look largely like uh, an iPhone 5 here. Um but with an incremental uh, update in terms of RAM and CPU and all that good stuff, maybe capacity. Uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of rumors about an iPhone 5C, which could be a low cost or prepaid version of the iPhone that remains to be seen. Uh, potentially, we can see some new iPads. Um, pretty interesting. So we'll see uh, what what comes of it and uh, be keeping an eye on it and you know, reporting on uh, what happens. From Uber Gizmo, Microsoft purchases Nokia's core cell phone business for $7.17 billion. That's right, $7.17 billion. Nearly a couple of weeks after Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer announced his retirement within the time span of one year, here we are with yet another Earth with yet another earth-shattering news for Microsoft. The software giant has officially dropped some estimated $7.18 billion to purchase Nokia's core cell phone business, which marks a rather bold move in an attempt to play catch-up with other players such as Apple and Samsung in the fast-growing mobile business sector. Part of this agreement would see Microsoft introduce several executives who could eventually take over Mr. Balmer's point host so uh wow very interesting very interesting from the verge neil young's pono music player and online store set for an early 2014 launch uh for those of you who ha who have not heard of this neil young wants to save you from the mediocre sound of most digital music but salvation won't come until next year um, so basically, he has announced on Facebook that Pono, his high-end music hardware and software combo, is lined up for an early 2014 launch. The simplest way to describe what we've accomplished is that we've liberated the music of the artist from the digital file and restored it to its original artistic quality as it was in the studio. It has primal power. Now, I'm all for high quality digital music. In fact, I'm all for high definition uh, quality music. And when I say high definition, I mean 24 bit sample sizes or even a 32 bit float sample size, an IEEE 32 bit float, uh, along with a really high sampling rate, you know, at least 96 kilohertz, preferably 192 kilohertz or even higher. I mean, it should be analog bandwidth and analog dynamic. Well, when I say analog dynamic range, I don't mean analog dynamic range as in what you capture on a tape. I mean analog dynamic range as in what we hear as humans. You know, 24 bits is pretty good. In fact, 24 bits is in many ways exceeds what humans can hear. Uh, but, you know, doing like a 32-bit float or something like that would give you just a little bit more um, oomph and uh, should be pretty interesting. Anyway. I don't have any specific details to adjust. 
Um, he characterizes it as walking out into full daylight uh, from a dark movie theater, and that's what listening to Pono is going to sound like. It's going to take a second to adjust because of just the sheer amount of detail that's rendered there. That would be awesome. Like I said, I'm all for high resolution, high detail music. You know, CD quality is uh, high quality, but not high resolution. You know, CD quality in many ways is fairly high quality. And if we could just deliver CD quality in compressed audio, that would be great. In fact, why are we even compressing it? I mean, at this point, you know, storage space and bandwidth is such that, you know, it's like, just give us the, you know, give us a format that has, you know, lossless compression, if any compression at all. Anyway, whole nother topic. But uh, yes, Pono it will be available Earth early 2014 i'm curious to uh, check it out and see what it sounds like uh from slash gear google glass is getting its own app store in 2014 what that's right those of you who have been wishing for an earlier release date for google's popular wearable computer might indeed have to wait longer for all the necessary pieces to fall into place google a google spokesperson has confirmed that a dedicated app store for the Google Glass won't be available until next year, so it would be make very little sense to release it for public consumption before then. Yeah, I mean, it really boils down to what can you do with it. If you got no app store, uh, it makes it kind of hard to, I mean, it's kind of like the original iPhone. Now, fortunately, Apple shipped a bunch of fairly useful apps out of the box with the original iPhone, but it didn't really hit full stride and really take off until the app store so uh, google is at least playing it safe and uh making the uh, uh, not making google glass available until the app store is ready from makezine.com the arduino team is offering details on the yun that's right arduino's upcoming board the yun is like an arduino leonardo and a linux-based wi-fi router packed onto one board huh interesting with its release about a week away, the Arduino team is starting to offer details on the hardware and how it all works together. Like the Leonardo, the Yoon has an AT Mega 32U4 chip, which can be programmed, even be programmed via USB, just like the Leonardo. However, the killer feature of the Yoon is the Atheros AR9331 chip, which runs the Linux side of the board. But how does it work with the 32U4? Well, the serial port of the AR9331 exposes the Linux console, a.k.a. the command line interface, or CLI, uh, for communication with the 32U4. You can even program the board via Wi-Fi. That's pretty awesome. So, uh, should be pretty interesting to see uh, this in action. It's definitely got a slightly different form factor uh, on the business end of the board, even though it still has the same, they have a picture of it here, still has the same standard Arduino uh, pinouts that you'd expect to see. So here is an Arduino Uno. So you still have the, uh, the header pins here, uh, here and here, it looks like. And on the end, it looks like there's uh, a micro USB connection uh, along with an Ethernet. It looks like an Ethernet. Uh, port and another port that I can't seem to identify right off the top of my head, but still pretty, pretty cool. Definitely uh, check it out, especially if you're into Arduino, which I am. From Hackaday, the JavaScript of things, uh, Esprino, there are a ton of people out there who can program in JavaScript, which I've never understood. I've never been a huge fan of JavaScript, but still, uh, but give them an, an an embedded device and they're up a creek without a paddle not anymore that is thanks to gordon's wonderful esperuno esperino it's a javascript interpreter for arm microcontrollers and it's also a very capable dev board that has more than enough power to turn just about any project you can imagine into reality so it's an arm cortex m3 in the form of the stm32 chip uh, 256 kilobytes of flash and 48 kilobytes of ram uh, has a ton of PWM and ADC pins to go along with two SPI ports, two I2C ports, and two DACs. It's a very capable piece of hardware, and if you're looking to build anything, it would be hard to pick up a better general-purpose dev board 
that happens to run JavaScript. Pretty cool. Um, again, personally, myself, I'm not a huge fan of JavaScript, but uh, pretty neat nonetheless. From Read Write, Google goes for a KitKat, not Key Lime Pie, in next Android version. That's right. Android 4.4 is coming soon, and uh, it is called KitKat. Not Key Lime Pie, as everyone expected. Um, pretty interesting. So should be, I'm curious how this is going to work, because KitKat, is also the name of a candy bar. Uh, they're running the promotion with Hershey's, the maker of the Kit Kat here in the U.S., and they're holding a contest to win a new Nexus 7 tablet or credit at the Android Google Play Store. So pretty interesting. I'll be curious to see what comes of it. Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.